Hi traders, welcome to this video. So today I want to talk about five must read quotes from Paul Tudor Jones. I want to give you my thoughts about the quotes and some insights and some background um, of that quotes. And first of all, who is Paul Tudor Jones? So Paul Tudor Jones is, um, yeah, is highlighted in the market visit series from uh, Jack Schwager and he's one of the most famous hedge managers, hedge fund managers in the world. And he is the CEO and manager from Tudor Investments. And Paul Tudor Jones is also very active in the charity world. He has an own foundation. Um, so the, the Robin Hood Foundation. And um, yeah, he's also, or, or you can find a lot about him um, here on YouTube and also if you uh, Google him. So very interesting life. And especially when it comes to investment and trading, um, I personally learned a lot um, about um, yeah, risk management from him. So not from him personally, of course, but what I read about him and uh, from interviews and also from, from the secret movie, The Trader. So there is a very nice movie about him. Um, he personally don't like it, but you find it here on, on YouTube and, and maybe also on Google. So if you... Um, yeah, if you um, search for Paul Tudor Jones and the trader or Paul Tudor Jones documentary, so you will find um, the movie about him. So I recommend that. Um, the movie gives you insights into the early life from Paul Tudor Jones um, when he uh, started his investment career. And you can see him in, in his private life and you can see how he trades and also very, very interesting insights into the mind um, from one of the most uh, successful traders. So let's go um, over the five quotes here. So Paul Tudor Jones said, first of all, never play macho man with the market. Second, never over trade. So this is a, a very famous quote from him and it's all about risk management. So never play a macho man. What does that mean? Well, the most traders over trade, so that means they trade too often or they trade a too big position size. And especially when emotions take over and you be active in the market and you're buying and the market is uh, going higher and you see your P&L is going higher, higher, higher. Um, in that case, you really want to cool down. So you don't want to fight with the market on the one side and on the other side you don't want to be too bold so you don't want to be over trading and over trading means too much margin and also too big position sizes so when you have for example 50 percent of your trading capital in one trade so and the trade goes against you say 10 percent so just a pull back to the ema 21 or something in that situation you lose 5% of your overall trading capital. And that's a lot. And that, that, also, um, that also has an impact on your equity curve, so the volatility on your equity curve, but also on your mindset. So when you try to play macho man with a market, um, you get a punch in the face in the next pullback or in the next market correction. So you always want to be under control. You want to control your actions and you want to control um, your trading frequency and also your position sizes. So you want to, yeah, you want to think about the next step and not about the current step. And you want to think about the consequences when it comes to trading. So when I put on a too big position size, I immediately know when I put that on and buy a position which is too large, I know that in the next situation, so in the next pullback or next correction, I get a punch in the face from the market. So that means I personally have rules to control my position size, which are based on experience and also based on statistics so that I never ever have a too big position size. And the second thing here, what, what he um, said is second, never over trade. So over trading is something which especially new traders are doing very often. So they fight with the market. That means they're taking too many trades. And especially when the market is not, yeah, is not good for you. 
So uh, when you have no edge in the market, that leads to big drawdowns and to a lot of frustration. And um, yeah, um, it takes a lot of mental um, capital. So that is definitely something which have an impact on your mindset. And also on the other side, when, when you are in a, in a winning streak and you make money and you overtrade, that means usually you're, you, you take profits too soon. So and in that situation, you never ever realize um, the full potential of a trade. So you're taking a lot of small gains instead of bigger gains. So that is also um, a side of overtrading. And overtrading, I've already talked about that when you put on too big position sizes and too much margins, that leads to a high volatility in your equity curve. And it also can go against you. So especially new traders which are yeah, blended by the high margins which are available in cryptos or in forex markets. So a leverage of uh, 100 or even 200, um, that is too much. So a, a very small move against you can wipe out your account. So I personally, I use margin. I use margin a lot. So, But my, my maximum large, uh, margin is um, 1.5 or 2. So that means a maximum of 200% of my uh, trading capital. And that's a lot. So especially if you, if you are not able to take profits at the right time, um, and your and and your your stocks are going down in your account. Say they move twenty percent against you, and you are two hundred percent invested. In that situation, you suffer a drawdown of forty percent. So that's a lot, and it needs a lot to come back to break even. And when you when you come from cash into the market and you start to invest and put on money. Um, it's very difficult to to um, yeah to get back to break even or to new highs. So always think about the consequences of everything you do in the market, and never play a metro man because you will always lose against the market, and never ever overtrade. The second point or second quote here: you adapt, involve, compete, or die. So this sounds a little bit brutal, but. It is absolutely true. As a trader, you have to adapt. So you must adapt to the market. When the market or when you have no edge in the market, you have to stop trading or you have to trade um, with only very, very little money. So when you are not doing that, you will lose money and you will lose money very quickly. Evolve, compete or die. Yeah, that that's something I personally... Uh, <laughs> I personally uh, don't think that's too important. So of course, if you are not able to compete with all the traders in the market, so that means you have no edge to make money or you doesn't evolve, um, in the long run, you will die. But I think it is much more important to adapt. So when you have a successful strategy, um, adapt or um, so, so that, that you uh, adapt as a trader that should be part of your rules or the result of your rules so that means when the market is not favorable for you you should go to cash or you should reduce your exposure to the market and that should be based on rules and not should be based on um yeah on on, on a random activity or on feelings or whatever so no it's very important that you have rules to manage your risk and also manage your exposure to the market because otherwise in the long run you will die so if you if you look at all the super stocks from 2021 so i i looked um, at all the super stocks in the last days so especially when we think about all the alternative energy stocks from the solar um, sector or when we think about electric vehicle stocks the most of them they corrected 70 80 or 90 percent so I imagined the situation when everybody was hot about um, about Nikola. So and everybody was was really really feeling um, good about the stock and and everybody was talking about the stock like workhorse or whatever. So if you have or if you if you um, if you kept those stocks and you held on to the stocks, you lost 
80 or 90 percent of your overall capital so and you cannot apply the same rules we had in 2021 to 2022 or whatever so that is really um or you have to adapt because the markets are always changing and when the markets become more and more volatile you have to adapt um that means you have to adapt your risk management you have to adapt the exposure and you also have to adapt the stocks you held or you hold in your uh, portfolio so because if stocks are not acting right you should sell them and that is important i personally i don't think that the markets itself are changing because of high frequency trading or automated trading or whatever so i i don't i don't see that and i don't feel that in my own trading so but if you are a day trader or if you are trading on a very yeah short time frame um maybe you feel that and maybe you see that and that also means you have to adapt because you cannot compete with those big boys um, uh, um from goldman sachs or whatever and um and the high frequency um uh, traders so that is not a field of competition for you as a retail trader so that means you have to adapt so very important quote from from paul to jones um let's look at the third one here don't focus on making money focus on protecting what you have this is um this is a quote where a lot especially of new um um new traders um are misguided so they, they they always think yeah i'm here in the market to make money yes of course you are in the market uh, to make money so everybody wants to make money in the markets only a few are able to make money but it is much more important on focus um on your on your risk or on your or on the um protection of your capital instead of focusing on the gains because when you lose a lot from your trading capital so that means a big amount of your trading capital it becomes harder and harder to get back to break even so if you lose 50 percent of your trading capital you need 100 percent to come back to break even so that means you must much much more focus on the um, on the downside on the risk management because the smaller your trading capital um, becomes the harder it will be to get back to break even and that is not the case if you if you look on on gains so profits take care of themselves so that means when, when you have profits and they are going up and up and up and maybe you have a trailing stop or whatever that's that's easy money so that's that's very easy um to to protect the downside so and on the other side when you lose open profits of course that hurts but it will not um or it, it will not have an impact on your core capital so that that means when when you when you start with 100,000 US dollar and you make 10% so then you have 110,000. If you lose the 10,000, you still have 100,000. So you are back to to the start. But if you start with 100,000 and then your equity goes up to 110 and then you do not protect yourself against a down move and now your capital went to 80,000, you are down 20,000. So and focusing only on making money is the wrong side because you want to protect and you always want to protect your baseline you want to protect your capital so that you always have a good start in the next market cycle and that is my interpretation of what paul tudor jones um said so don't focus on making money focus on protecting what you have so it is much easier to make money in the right market environment but there are so many difficult market environments where it is very difficult to make any money so and when you think about that that only maybe 20 percent or 30 percent of all market moves will have a big impact on your equity curve and 70 percent your yeah the market is going sideways or volatile or yeah you don't find the right stocks to trade that 
that that resaw or that that leads to the situation that you should focus much more on protecting what you have. So when I look at my equity curve and when I look at the markets, my equity curve always starts to go down or starts to move sideways when the markets are moving sideways. So and almost all the drawdowns I have in my equity curve um, are the result of a of a volatile um, general stock market which is going sideways. So and the problem is that that the stock market itself is going sideways for a long time. So for 70 or 60 percent of, of, of all market periods. And when you do not protect yourself against that and protect the downside and protect what you have, you will suffer a lot of drawdowns and you, your equity curve and your portfolio always will go sideways. So because, because you're always fighting against drawdowns instead of focusing on, on protecting your baseline and then start from, uh, from, a, um, yeah, from a high baseline in your uh, trading account. So the fourth uh, quote here with a one to five risk reward ratio, you have a 20% hit rate. You can actually be wrong 80% of the time and still not lose. A lot of traders, they, they like to be right a lot of time. And yes, that also has some benefits when we look at the statistics. So when you are right a lot of, a lot of times in your in your trading, so that means you have a high hit rate, say of 70% or 80% or something. Um, in that situation, it's very easy to, to make new highs, but you're taking, or normally you're taking very, very small gains. And I personally, I don't like to rely on the hit rate too much. So my hit rate is usually around 40%. So in, in bad times, so when the market is not um, yeah, it's not uh, behaving um, good and, and I don't have an edge. In that time, my hit rate is only 10 or 20 percent. So and in and, and good times when the market is really, really good um, in that situation, I have a hit rate of, say, 60 percent. So but overall, it is something around 40 percent, sometimes a little bit down, uh, sometimes a little bit less, sometimes a little bit more. But I personally don't like to rely too much on the hit rate because I am often wrong with my trades. I am managing my risk actively. I take losses actively to protect my baseline, to protect my capital, my overall capital. And I personally, I try to hit home runs. So I try to, to do what, what Paul Tudor Jones said here. I try to, to find stocks or to trade stocks with a very high risk reward ratio that means when when i risk one percent of my trading capital i want to get back five percent so and my my personally um risk reward ratio over all my trades is higher than one point uh, one to um one to um five so it's more one to six or one to seven so and but it is, it is important if you are a trend follower, it is important that you let your profits run so that you increase the risk reward ratio, not to look at too much at the hit rate. Because you make all your money as a trend follower on big trades, on just a handful of trades in a year which have a very high return. So, so, so trades which double or maybe you run one, 100, 200% or something. In a good year, you, you catch also trades which are going up 300%. In a bad year, you only have a handful of say 30% or 50% winners. So, and you must know, you must know um, which type of personality you are. So what, what is the trading style which suits you? And on the other side, when you are more a trend follower um, guy, so in that situation, don't look at the hit rate too much. So Paul Tudor Jones here said, okay, I am, I am happy with a 20% hit rate as long as I take care that my trades are big enough or my 
position, uh, my profits are large enough. So when I have a, high, a one to five risk reward ratio, so when I risk 1% of my trading capital and get back 5% on average, I'm happy with a 20% hit rate. So that means I can be wrong 80% of the time and still not lose money. So I can make 10 trades and I can lose on eight of them and only make two trades with a hit uh, ra uh, with a, a risk reward ratio of one to five and still not lose money so that that means you you do not rely too much on being right or wrong or whatever the only thing what you have to take care of is that your profits are large enough and i personally think that is a very robust approach so that that you do not rely too much on on that that you are being right or selected the right stock or whatever. So it's much more important to let the profits run when you are in a trade which shows you a profit. And if you if you if you um, experience a lot of different market situations and you know that your hit rate is going up and going down depending on the overall market. So especially when you are um, a stock only trader. In that situation, you want to become a little bit independent from the hit rate because the market itself, so the stock market itself, with a trend um, in the stock market, that has a high impact on your hit rate as a trader. So when, when, when the overall market is volatile, I have a very small hit rate. So it's only, say, 10 or 20 percent or whatever. In that situation, I want to be out of the market so, but when I then start to come back into the market and I have some losing trades and my hit rate is still uh, very low, um, it doesn't matter because I maybe catch one or two big trades and that um, and and those two, one or two big trades they will pay for all the small losses and, um, and and still some profits are left. So it is a very robust approach which um, gives you a little bit independence from from the overall market so the last quote where you want to be is always in control never wishing always trading and always first and foremost protecting your butt always in control that is what every trader wants to do and wants to be always in control never be too emotional um, always follow your rules never wishing or or predicting or hoping or whatever always trading so that means always um yeah look look or look on what's going on in the in in the in the current situation what is going on in in the current minute in the in the, in the current hour so what is going on in the here and now and not tomorrow and and not yesterday and always first and foremost protecting your butt so we spoke about that protecting what you have that is very important in the mindset from uh, paul tudor jones but always in control nobody is always in control so traders are no machines and there is always a wishful thinking that you can automatize everything in trading so i personally Yes, I saw some trading systems and I'm, I'm absolutely convinced that there are, are traders out there who are very successful um, in a systemized trading and can automatize everything. I'm not that type of person. I don't like that. So it's not my world and it's not my business. I'm in the business to find great stocks and to trade them and to time the market a little bit and um, yeah, to find interesting, innovative companies which are able to grow extremely fast. So, and I do a lot of mistakes. That that means I do a lot of mistakes um, when it comes to stock selection. So I'm I'm convinced about a stock, and no, of course that <laughs> that is not a big winner. So and then I take the next trade, and I, and I have conviction in the trade, and. Yeah, it's also going sideways and it's not going up. I sell it. So I do a lot of mistakes. I'm also emotional. Sometimes I buy a stock um, out of a feeling or whatever, but it never has a big impact on my trading capital because I am very good at risk management. 
So and of course I'm I'm emotional when when I look at my equity curve and and see it's going down and I'm a little bit frustrated and it's going up. But I have rules in place for everything, and I have some um, some values I try to protect. So for example, letting my profits run. So always look at the EMA twenty one or EMA sixty five, and this is yeah this is my my um, protection line in the market when it comes to to single stock positions or i have um, a high conviction in risk management so never risking more than one percent always start with small positions in the market um give every stock the doubt um so that that it's able to show you that it's a big winner but control the downside so never let a big profit turn into a loser and i have a lot of those rules and a lot of those uh, things in, in my mind and also in my spreadsheets and also in my um, my trading diaries etc so but in the end I'm a human and I will do mistakes and I'm absolutely aware of that but the thing is what I can control is how I react to my mistakes so sometimes when I buy when I buy a stock position when I say okay wow the thing looks really good and it has all the char- characteristics I want to show. But yeah, maybe it's a little or or the market cap is a little bit too small or it is um, or it has a little bit too low volume. OK, I buy a small test position. So I put on uh, put 5% or 6 or 7% of my capital into the trade. And then at the end of the day, I think, OK, no, that was a mistake. So I immediately close the position and move on. So because then I'm putting myself back into control. So I let or I, I, I exited um, my, my control zone for just for just a few minutes or one or two hours. And then I'm back in my uh, in my um, control zone again. So always being in control is something which I personally think nobody will achieve um, um, in, in the trading world, in the discretionary trading world. So and it's not a it's it's not so important. So it's much more important to to make sure that everything which is out of control will not have a big impact on your trading, on your mindset, and also on your um, on your trading capital. Never wishing, never hoping. That is something which you can easily um, yeah do or control with with rules. So if you have clear exit rules, clear stop loss rules. Um, and then it's it's very very easy to never wish or hope or whatever so you exit a trade when your um, stop loss is reached so there is no discussion about that and the most trades i exit as a loss are very small positions so because they often immediately fail after i bought them so and in that situation i personally don't want to wish or hope or whatever because the, sh- the trade is showing me directly after the start that i'm wrong with a trade and in that situation i close it out or i i let myself um stop out so i personally don't have a- any problems with wishing or hoping or whatever so when a trade is not fulfilling what i expect or when i see um, a, a nasty move against me and and uh, something which w- which, which I personally think um, the stock should not do, then I react to that immediately and sell a part of the position or or sell the stock at all. So that is something which which yeah which is very easy for me. So but I think being always in control is something everybody wants to do or wish to do, but only maybe a few traders are really um, yeah are really able to do that i think it's a little bit a different uh, thing if you are managing a fund or if you are the head of investments or the fund manager in a large company so i think that's a little bit different because we have so much different other people and they have different roles in a company so like risk managers or or um yeah the whole back office process and they will help you with controlling your rules so it's very difficult um to 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 trade a a too big position size in a company where you have a strict 
risk management department and also back office departments. So I think this is a little bit a different situation, but as a retail trader, it's very difficult to be always in control. Um, it's, it's much more important to be in control um, that you always keep your risk management rules and to make sure that all the mistakes do not have a big impact on your um, trading capital. So um, I hope that the, um, that the quotes helps you a little bit, especially when it comes to risk management, to, 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 yeah, to understand my interpretation about them and also the background information I give you. So Paul Tudor Jones is always an inspiration when it comes to risk management. And also when, when you look into his um, movie, so you will see that he is very aggressive when it comes to trading and he is really living trading. So he, he is, he's think about and feel about trading all the time. So and he's a, he is a very interesting uh, character when it comes to yeah, being in balance um, between risk management and being aggressive. So that means an aggressive risk manager. And this is something which, uh, which, which inspires me. And especially when, when I, when I listen to interviews and also read, um, read interviews, um, in the market uh, wizard series or, um, or on other, um, on other, um, articles. So especially I personally, I'm, I'm always impressed what he's thinking about risk management and how he put the focus on, on risk management. So, and that's maybe also the reason why he survived so many years um, in the market. And by the way, so Paul Tudor Jones is, or have, um, has a, a total different trading style than me. So I'm a, I'm a pure stock trader. He's a macro trader. But when it comes to those basic principles, um, we agree with each other. So, and I can take over his yeah, knowledge and, and what, what he's said and, and uh, what, what, he's, um, what he's thinking. I can take that over and use it um, for my own trading and for my own um, mindset. So if you like the video, um, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. Um, write a comment if you have any questions or any feedback. Uh, so you can follow me, of course, here on YouTube and also on on other social media platforms like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I personally um, recommend to subscribe to my free newsletter. So I send it out every Sunday um, with some trading tips and you also get my uh, free ebook, um, my personal 25 lessons of the stock market as a free gift if you subscribe uh, to my free newsletter. 